deseparation. The type of question we're going to answer is, are two random variables, x and y, conditionally independent given some evidence variables, z? Deseparation will allow us to answer these questions by just looking at the graph structure of the base net. So, to do this, we'll look at all undirected paths from x to y, and if none of these paths is active, then we declare independence. A path is active if each triple along that path is active. So let's take a look at what kind of triples we can have. We'll categorize them into active triples and inactive triples. The first kind of triple is one where we have a causal chain. A points to B points to C. So we have right here. If B, the middle node, is unobserved, we have an active triple. If B, the middle node, is observed, we have an inactive triple. A second type of triple is the common cause. Here, B points to A and to C. If B is unobserved, then we have an active triple. If B is observed, we have an inactive triple. Third case is a common effect or a V structure. In this case, the middle node B is being pointed to by both A and C. This case is different. Here, when B is observed, we have an active triple, or when any of the descendants of B are observed, we have an active triple. If B is not observed and none of its descendants are observed, we have an inactive triple. So now, when we look at an undirected path, we can break it down into all its triples, and for each triple, just decide whether it's active or inactive by looking it up in this table. All it takes to make a path inactive is to just have one inactive triple along that path. To be able to declare conditional independence, all paths connecting the two variables need to be inactive. So to summarize, we'll be given a query of the following form. Is xi independent of xj given some evidence variables xk1 through xkn? And we'll check all undirected paths between xi and xj. And we'll check for each of these paths whether it's active. If active, then we return. We're done running the algorithm. And we we can say that it's not guaranteed that xi is independent of xj conditioned on these evidence variables. If, on the other hand, we reach this point here in the algorithm, that means we check all paths and all of them were inactive, then we are guaranteed that xi is independent of xj given all these evidence variables. Just as a reminder, what that means is that for any probability distribution defined with a base net using the structure of the graph that we're working with, any probability distribution that fits this graph structure will satisfy this conditional independence. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. Here's example one. What can we say about E and D when we're given as evidence variables B? Okay, well, let's consider paths that consider D and E. Let's start with this path over here, D, A, E. That path consists of one triple. That one triple is active. Once we found, this is the one triple constituting in the entire path, so the entire path is active. We found an active path. That means we cannot guarantee the independence. What can we say about B and C? In this case, there is no evidence. Well, let's start considering all paths between B and C. Let's start with this one here. This one has, consists of one triple. The one triple is a causal chain where the middle node is not observed. So this is an active triple, which means the entire path is active because it's the only triple in the path. 
And so we have an active path from C to B, which means that we cannot guarantee independence of C and B. Now let's look at A and D conditioned on B. Okay, well let's consider all the paths that connect A and D. Let's first consider this path over here. This path consists of two triples. The first triple is a causal chain. The middle node E is unobserved, so this is active. The second triple is also a causal chain. The middle node B is observed, so this is inactive. This means that the entire path, once we find an inactive triple along a path, the entire path is inactive, so this entire path is inactive. Okay, so we found an inactive path. That means we have to keep looking until we've exhausted all paths. Here is another path. This path consists of one triple, DCA. It's a common cause triple. The middle node is not observed, so it's an active triple. The path consists of only one triple, so the entire path is active. Um, we found an active path connecting D and A, so that means we cannot guarantee that they're independent given this evidence. Let's see what we can say about D and C given E. D is here, C is here, E is over here. Lots of paths connecting D and C. Okay, let's start with this one over here. This path consists of one triple. It's a V structure with no evidence observed in the effect or any of the descendants of the effect. So this is an inactive triple. Once we find an inactive triple, the path is inactive. So this is an inactive path between C and D. Okay, that means we need to keep verifying all remaining paths. Um, let's consider next this path here. C, B, D. Consists of two triples. For the first triple, we have a common cause with the cause unobserved, which means this is an active triple. The second triple consists of a causal chain with the middle node which is to be observed, so this one is inactive. So we find an inactive triple along this path, which means the entire path that we're looking at is inactive. Let's see if there are any other paths left. Yes, here is another path connecting C to D, C through B, through E, through A, into D. Okay, we, right away, we can right away see, for example, that the, this triple here, E, A, D, is a V structure with un, no observations in the middle node or its descendants, so it's an inactive triple, which means the entire path is inactive. Any other paths left that connect C and D? Yes, there's one path left. Let's change the color to make a little... Send out a little more. We could go C to A, up to E, into D. Okay, this path has two triples. The first triple we'll look at is CAE. CAE looks like this. C, A, E. A is unobserved and none of its descendants are observed, so this means this triple is inactive. We found an inactive triple along the path, so the path is inactive. We checked all four paths that connect C and D. All of them were inactive. This means we can guarantee that D and C are independent given this evidence. Okay, what can we say about A? and D. Lots of paths connecting A and D. We know that once we find an active path, we're done, because that means we cannot guarantee independence. So looking at this graph here, I'm going to choose this path first. And this path consists of one triple. 
It's a common cause triple with the middle node unobserved, so this is an active triple. That triple constitutes the entire path, so the entire path is active. So we found an active path connecting DNA, which means we cannot guarantee this independence. Okay, here we look at A and D. D is over here, A is over here. Again, lots of paths connecting A and D. Um, we know that once we find an active path, we're done. So I'm going to start with checking this path over here because I have a suspicion it's active. This path consists of one triple. It's a causal chain triple. This causal chain triple has the middle node unobserved, which means it's an active triple. That triple constitutes the entire path, so the entire path is active. We found an active path connecting DNA, so it decays that we cannot guarantee independence of DNA. Now I'm just at in B and E. So B and E here. There's only one path connecting B and E. It's a V structure with no evidence observed in the effect or in any of its descendants. This one path is inactive because the triple is inactive. So we can guarantee independence from B and E because there's only one path between them and the one path is inactive. Let's look at D and A given E. D is here, A is here, E is over here. Well, there's only one path connecting D and A. It's a causal chain with the middle node unobserved, so this is an active triple. This triple constitutes the entire path, so all triples along the path are active, which means the path is active. Once we found an active path, we're done. We know we cannot guarantee independence. Now we're interested in A and C given B. C is here, A is here, B is up here. Okay, there's just one path connecting A and C. It consists of two triples. Let's consider this triple first. This is a V structure with no evidence in the common effect or in its descendants, so it's inactive. And once a triple along a path is inactive, the path is inactive. It's the only path, so all paths connecting A and C are inactive, which means A and C are independent given B. Now we're interested in C and E given A. C is over here, E is over here. Lots of paths connecting uh, C and E. Let's start with this path here. This path is a causal chain. It's because of one triple, which is a causal chain. This triple has the evidence in the middle, has evidence in the middle node, which means it's inactive. So we have an inactive path here. It means we need to keep looking. Next, let's look at this path over here. That path consists of two triples. The first triple here is a causal chain. No evidence in the middle nodes so active. The second triple consists of a common cause where the cause is unobserved, so it's also an active triple. The path consists of just two triples, both are active, so the entire path is active. We found an active path connecting A and C, so we're done. We know we cannot guarantee this independence. 